want to follow me in order? First thing on the agenda is mail. You want to continue with no. minutes? Minutes. I think it's just a short one, and we well, we haven't had a chance to look at it. Okay. No, it's October 30th. Oh, it's over the full year. Yeah, we have the Okay, we're going to open the public hearing. 7:05. This has been re-advertised, but basically just a continuation of the last meeting because of a technical mistake that the chairman made. So, how about it? And we understand we have new submissions. Well, we finally got a, an official survey of the property for you. <coughs> and this is the rule of details of the property. And then there is a uh, schematic greenhouse as well. And if I give you a copy of all of these, there is um, some information the last okay. Is this a complete packet now? Yes. This is everything that... Except for these. Except for those. <coughs> well, there's no written. You want some written material as well? Oh, you already have that. You've had that before, but uh, we're not going to do it just slightly. So. Thank you. And Scott uh, Sword will be presenting one. So you, you have the uh, the narrative from the much earlier submission going all the way back, I think, to uh, about four months back from the very first submission when we first arrived. Have there been no changes made to it in the last four months? The only changes that have been made, uh, not on that, there haven't been. But based on the survey, and we did uh, do a survey as Stephen just passed out, uh, in large part because the zoning board who we're actually going to be meeting with night after tomorrow, mm -hmm. they wanted a survey done. And although this board uh, told us originally we didn't need to do the survey, we wanted to submit that as well because we understand that's a part of your, your bylaw process. Uh, as a result of this survey, we also uh, did up this drawing that's a reconfiguration. Yeah, which we had a good board. I don't know how this one is. I think this one will, we were able to make this one work the last the other night. That diagram is the last one of the graphic package figure 14 as well. So you have uh, a small 8 by 11 of this in your packages as the last page. But we're going to submit this as well okay. with the, the survey. I can get it up here just so we can walk you through it. I'm not seeing a. Um Anything about the uh, electric consumption? <coughs> this says nothing about the electrical use. Which was in the package that you guys emailed to us. Yes, I've got that. So <clears throat> this is the last page. I know you already have the documents that you have there is the staple pack. You already received those. But as a result of the meetings we've had thus far, <clears throat> the site uh, visit that we held, Thank you. and the survey plan, uh, we had originally intended on moving these greenhouses anyway. Uh, so we're actually moving, still moving those greenhouses. But as a result of the survey, now we have the lines drawn. So that uh, although originally we were looking to get a variance from the zoning board, 
Uh, we no longer are pursuing that because we're just chopping the ends off the greenhouses so that we stay within the envelope. Uh, that keeps us within the 50 foot setback requirements by your bylaws and still allows us to get at uh, 9,900 square feet of growing space within the greenhouses reoriented within that same envelope. So you now have that as the last page. Is the greenhouse on the top right stay? No. As I said, these greenhouses are being turned this way. Okay. So the key, and it's in your packet, the last page yes. of your packet, uh, you'll see a key at the bottom that identifies the green areas, shortened and relocated greenhouses with surveyed 50 foot setback envelope, 66 by 15, four of those, and then 66 by 30, these two here, and then this uh, harvest building in that same space. So that was originally in the drawings, but it wasn't as clear as this, nor was it superimposed on, this is a, a, a reproduction of what the survey that you have in front of you. So what we did is we used the survey image to actually draw the, uh, the greenhouse to scale so you could see how those would, uh, would fit within, within the envelope. Of, uh, of the, the envelope being setback. the 50 foot setback. That's correct. That's right. Correct. As the well red, as the 500 foot setback. Correct. Correct. Right. The, no, the 500 bed, and that's all on the survey plan. We have someone from the school board here, so you might want to point out the 500 foot uh, It's actually be better to look at it from the survey itself. If they'd like to come up and take a look at that, they can do that. But here's the survey. This is the formal stamped surveys from an architectural firm, uh, a survey company that came up. There was a question on the uh, the setbacks for the school property. So to this pin, 500 feet south of the school property is here. This is the border of the school property. The border of the school property is here. This is 500 feet from that property line. And then the, this is, this so is at the last meeting, it was going to be like 600 something feet. That's changed? No, that hasn't changed. The, that was from the so the greenhouses themselves, it was 600. This is showing you compliance with Waitley's bylaws of 500 foot setback, so that we're well within the 500 foot setback of where the property is. It might be easier to see it on this one. I, so I, I can, can see it out of here. Go ahead. Here, Here's a satellite. So again, per uh, primarily the zoning board uh, would ask us to get a survey plan. Uh, again, despite uh, this board saying we didn't need it, we wanted to submit that as well because it gives you the exact uh, survey measurements stamped uh, by a, a, a professional land surveyor uh, per, per your, your uh, site plan bylaws. So as I mentioned when I first started talking, we started the process uh, back in May uh, with the very first uh, communication to the town. Uh, depending on what date we use, I know we had an application that was uh, signed as submitted August 28th with a uh, July 31 public hearing initiation at that point. So we've essentially been having a hearing uh, over the three meetings that we've been with you, plus the uh, site uh, visit that we had for the board. Uh, and over that six months now, and providing the survey plans in, in, in addition to above what uh, you originally requested for, uh, we're hopeful that we can draw the hearing to a close and that unless there are other requirements that you have, I went through uh, the nine different criteria in your zoning bylaws over what it takes uh, for this board to approve a site plan. Uh, and uh, based on what we have and what we're drawing using existing greenhouses, uh, we're well within all of those criteria and we would encourage uh, the board to move to a favorable vote on, uh, on our site plan approval. Well, it looks, I mean, I haven't read the whole thing through yet, but it looks like it's finally a complete submission. You've got now all the information that we've been hoping to get. Uh, is this security fence still accurate? This is, this is the security fencing the way we need so this girl. This page is not relevant. This is the that is not relevant, correct. But this okay, this is part of your final submission here. Uh, I should tear it out. We should just remove those. Yeah, you can remove that. Well, the security fence won't be accurate until these uh, the fence is installed. Well, and so I'm sorry. That's right. But that diagram doesn't show gates. It doesn't show 
Correct. Well, this is accurate as far as placement of gates, placement of security. The security plan that we reviewed with the chief of police will still be relevant. It will still need to be approved uh, by the uh, Cannabis Commission. Uh, we have received notification from them uh, that our uh, application has been received as complete. Uh, we expect a provisional license from them in short order uh, once the folks get back from holidays. Uh, and uh, following that, uh, we, we want to meet uh, the growing season, so really need a, uh, an approval uh, so that we can start making some investments and moving more of the equipment around and more of the greenhouses around and getting uh, the material order that we need to, uh, to get the site up and running. I, I don't see where the exterior lights would be. They should be in the document that you have. And again, we've reviewed the security plan with your chief of police, and it would need I, to be approved by the Cannabis Commission. I guess I'm confused how the building inspector is going to take that diagram and some of these others and, and know which is operative. Am I the only one? You can look at the comprehensive building package. going to be the utility building. Well, somebody's going to have to testify that the, that the lights are where they ought to be, the cameras are the ones that they ought to be. He is our zoning enforcement zoning agent. Enforcement agent. So right. it's not a matter of entirely building permits, it's a matter of ensuring that it's built as it's supposed to be. And I I guess I would I feel if I were like he I would be confused. We had a plan that showed where the lights were gonna be, didn't we? I thought we did. Is that as part there of the original drawing? There was never a plan with lights. There was never gonna be security lights. Can't have security lights at a growth facility because it would interrupt the photo periods. And we talked about the cameras, but you said and we also we're, not put, we're not going to put the cameras on the map because, because the chief of police said that right. he wants that to makes sense. Correct. Okay. And the cameras would be infrared. Yeah. Uh, but the I also had now that you're mentioning it, uh, there was concern that was raised throughout the public hearing process of folks not having light pollution, and that we wanted to respect that as well. So. Infrared cameras are what we're going with the plan at this at this point, and what we plan to put up around the facility itself. Okay, the site plan no longer shows um, security building. Uh, it's here. That's labeled though as a uh, harvest, harvest building. building. That's where all of our equipment will be located. It's the only if you look at what's within the fencing, it's the only hard building that we have. Uh, it's 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 comparable to the same building that we had in the original diagrams. And it's the only building that will have to house all of our electric, our, our equipment for the security cameras, uh, for uh, the, the pumping system, for our irrigation. You know, that'll be our, our, our location for all of that storage, et cetera, will be in that one building. Uh, can you? Describe this on page four. There's a reference to a. I'm sorry, page four of which document? The text. Says the security fence will provide opportunity to fully screen the side light, affecting the butters using fence screens, slates. Yes. Or attached shade cloth as shown below. I think we had requested that you specify one or the other and the specifications. The specifications yeah, for no, that wasn't mentioned. That was not mentioned. That we was need to mentioned. know how you're going to screen it. Well, it's either going to be depending on cost, a cloth like this that actually obscures everything, or slats that go through the chain link fence. Do you have a description of the slats? You're seeing a picture of it in front of you there. I thought this was the cloth. Sorry? Because Sorry? That was the cloth. I thought this is the cloth. That's the cloth. So it will either be the cloth Do or it will be slats. Picture of the slats? Uh, I don't have a picture of the slats, but I can call one up on the phone pretty quick. It's pretty standard uh, for what you've seen through any chain link fence. There are narrow strips that go diagonal through the chain link fence. Well, I and I can call up a picture on our phone right now if you'd like to see a picture of what that looks like. But it's pretty standard. That would be helpful. We also understand that uh, the, and the reason why you see the dotted line here, it's not compliant 
uh, with any setback requirements is because the fencing does not need to comply with setback requirements within the town. So the fencing is purely for the security measures. It's primarily driven uh, by not only our need to avoid loss of product and, and intrusion on the property, but also is required by the Cannabis Commission. It will be a part of the final inspection before we can get a license to operate. Did the ZBA give you an opinion about that? Or is that just your opinion? On, on the, the fence? Yes, Rod, Roger said yeah. the setbacks are only from structures. Yeah, yeah that's correct. description of the alarms I'm sorry we, we haven't had a chance to look there's not a description of the alarms because we talked about those in previous meetings uh, and we did talk to the chief of police on those alarms and those are not things that we want to share publicly for security reasons and we, we talked to this more we specifically talked about, about the position what we need to know is and I think should be documented is whether they ring loudly on site they will not ring loudly on site it would be helpful to have that document we, we were under the impression that the security would be left to Chief Sabine and the CCC to sign off on the our, our concerns, I think we're into two different sets of concerns. Obviously, the Chief has to sign off on whether it's adequate or not. Our concern is impact on our butters. And, and so if you had big flashing lights or huge Noisy Again, that arms. falls under the security plan, and that was. I don't to be know that they're mutually exclusive. So, if you have verbally told us that they would be silent, but I don't think we have any documentation of that, and I would feel more comfortable. With that. I mean, we can condition it. Oh, yeah. But I, you know, I'm sure that that the chief would. You know, we could come to some arrangement where it's comfortable with the security, but I... I it I, does describe I, the, the, the manner of notification in the text. We do, okay. yeah. And it says, and it says uh, security breach alerted no more than five minutes from initial notification. This notification shall be in the form of page two under the security yeah. and publication site. Okay. Notification shall be in the form of a telephone call, text message, or free alert, which Sounds appropriate. Okay, that's, that's fine. That's taken right out of the CCC 935 uh, CMR 500. Yeah. Yeah. Which I will say they accepted our security plan as written, the CCC did, so that was part of getting the final. Excellent. Yep. And, and uh, with all due respect, the board has had this information for four months. This written document, you've had this document for four uh, months. Actually, there's, there's a number of differences between the ones Correct. submitted in October. Yeah. In, I have dated October, August 28th. I don't actually know what the date is because... For the original one that was submitted. So what was originally submitted was a written document, and that's the document that you have the text well, in front of that document says there will be, because it's indoors, there's no need for order control. I mean, there are there's some major differences since that document was submitted. Well, let's, let's not argue over little details So we're that. trying to find out... What's You're trying to make it look bad. We're not... No, 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 I'm not doing that at all. Well, you are, because you say we've had it for all this time. And I, I just wish you'd leave those kind of statements out of this. Very good. Thank you. So, um, are there any other questions by the board? Uh, I thought the energy plan looked great. Looked like just what we were hoping for, I thought. I don't know what the rest of the board felt about it. Well, I had some concerns about how much the scrubbers would run and the fans with the scrubbers and what they might do, but the rest of it I thought was fantastic. Thank you. Well, I had a bit of concern about that, but the, the numbers are so skewed yeah. the other way that yeah. I think they would have to probably run 24 hours a day. Um, on page two of the energy calculation, in the last paragraph refers to a GDD. Uh, that's growing degree days? Heat growing units. degree days, okay. I saw the HDD, I knew what that was. Got it. Yeah, that seems good. That's I had some questions about the odor system. Um, 
It doesn't specify. I'm reading it here. All we had before was the diagram. So. Yes, sir. Um, I don't see any mention of where the scrubbers will be placed, how many of them there will be. I mean, you're moving one scrubber from greenhouse to greenhouse or having three in every greenhouse. I mean, it's not clear how many. I don't. Excuse me, I'm just moving this as I go along here. But I, it describes the can 150. It doesn't. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have one uh, in one greenhouse now that we've already purchased. The plan would be to have one wherever there is any cultivation going on in each greenhouse. And we purchased that in large part so you can see that during the tour uh, and see it in operation and hear it so that you would see that it's not a loud piece of machinery so it won't disturb uh, the neighborhood. Now, does the fan have to run for this to be effective? Yes. It does. Okay. And what activates it? Is the odor level? It can activated? be activated automatically or it can be activated uh, manually. By turning a switch. By turning a switch. Phys physically turning a switch. Automatically means if the odor reaches a certain level. Or humidity, likely humidity. It won't, it won't register humidity or odor. It will register humidity levels or it will be timed to, to go on automatically. Uh, but it will only run during a certain phase of when the plants are actually blooming. So it really won't run all the time. <coughs> because there's no mention of this one being one per greenhouse. Probably make that a condition. Well, also, I think we need to specify that when things are flowering, should it run all the time? I would think so. If it either that or somebody's going to have to be on site to turn it on and off. I think we would leave it to the grower's discretion to control odor. The yeah. requirement is that the odor doesn't get beyond the property line. Mm -hmm. And so I don't know why we would micromanage there. Their, their their use of this this tool that they have to control the odor. It can also be on a timed switch, so it can go on every ten minutes. It will exchange the atmosphere every twenty eight minutes in a large greenhouse. Are you intending to have at least one in each greenhouse? Yes, yes, absolutely. I do think it should specify that. Okay, well we'll make that a condition. Get that, Mary? No, you don't. That's the only one so far, right? Or are you? Well, that's but everybody said yes, definitely. Right. Um, now we had talked before about having a, an engineer possibly certify that the the proposed odor mechanisms were adequate. And since I have no personal capability to judge that, I would feel better if, if we did have that. I think that, personally, I think that would be a bit onerous. Uh, the, the applicants have claimed that they want to be good neighbors because they want to keep in, keep this operation going, and I don't believe that no. they would put in something that wasn't working and we're not good neighbors. So the building inspector is the person of contact. For instance, for the school while it's in session, if there's odors, they would call the building inspector? I think the Board of Health. Board of Health? Yeah. Or just talk to the people who are growing the product. It seems like a good place to start. Yep. Uh, I guess I'm not too, I'm not as worried about the odor as maybe you as in a butter might be or other I mean, butters might it be. It will be very uh, but interesting to find out right. how this is. This is a yeah. It's so territory. that's why I think it's especially important for you butters, particularly children during a school day in the school to know who to contact when there is an issue. Yes. So. Good point. In Waitley this past growing season there was a four acre field of hemp growing. Hemp is the same species as marijuana. I happened to talk to the chief of police yesterday and I asked him about that. Did he notice any smell? He says, I never smelled it. It was just across from the police station. Mm -hmm. We're not going to have four acres 
of cannabis growing. And so, yes, if you're in the greenhouse, you will smell the odor. Are they are they equally odiferous? Yes. Same. Essentially, the difference it's between the same and, species. And cannabis yeah, is but, yeah. THC versus not THC. You can have flowers that smell strongly and flowers that don't yeah. have much smell. So. Yeah, exactly. But, but they're functionally, the, to the human eye, you couldn't tell uh, which is which. Yes. Yeah. 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 I think if, in that case, we should require that have as a condition that the Board of Health approve the odor control plan because this was something they specifically had concerns about and they haven't seen this. And in fact, I guess all the committees need to see this before. Um. Because this packet is now this packet is, is new to everybody. It's new to everybody, so all the all the committees need to see it. But in this case, specifically the board of health. I don't know that the board of health has a. I don't know what good that would do. I don't know if they well they have they, the expertise to. They they express concern to us with the original plan about odor control and disposal of materials on the shelf. Yep. And I think since it's new, we obviously they need to sign off on it. I, I feel a specific condition since odor was their concern that they should sign off. Okay. I will say this system that we're going to be using is identical to what it's a, and East Hampton uses, Rise uses, and Holyoke, and they are very close to a butters. We're talking, you know, 10 to 15, 20 feet. And I can tell you they are extremely effective. It's it's the the industry standard for controlling odors. The written material you had, the only real change in it was the listing of the figures. The last figure being added to it. Um, I think we would have to figure uh, the odor control is new in, yes. in this in this write up. Uh, but yes, see a lot of it seemed very familiar. I think one thing that seems to me to be new is the statement that there's one crop per year in most greenhouses. Last time you were here you were talking to me. Where do you see that under the energy plan? Yeah. Yes, number one. First, first, first part of it. This is how it was in the original version as well. Okay. Well, verbally you were saying too. So, so you're doing one crop a year. You're not doing the winter crop anymore. At at this point, we're planning one. So, if we approve this, then presumably you stay at one. Well, that would be, you know, because it's you getting more change. This is, a, this is a site plan review, not a grow review. Well, except the energy plan is based on that. The energy plan also, though, I mean, is I'm, I'm so disparate from how much they would have to put in there if it wasn't a greenhouse that you can go through the energy plan and double everything for the, well, actually, because it's a full year. The energy plan is actually based on lights. Right. And lights and some heat. And some heat. Right. Yeah. Yeah. right. And the fans. And the fans. Yes. So. But presumably, if you grow in the wintertime, you're going to have more. The, the energy plan is, I guess, this doesn't, what concerns me is this implies perpetuity and, and you're saying well it's to start and I don't I can't think of anything at the moment that might change with that. I guess I think we should keep in mind that there is a five-year review on this okay. and that um, I mean first of all the applicant has been expressed repeatedly their desire to make the neighborhood happy but also if after five years there's egregious issues with this then their permit doesn't get renewed or it gets modified. 
so I'm a bit concerned about the uh, the uh, light blocking, and I would think that maybe the slats, all of them that I've ever seen, are going to leak through pretty horribly. And I think I would rather see the, the drop cloth. And I don't know if we should make that as a condition. Is that is the cost difference? Plus, that's probably cheaper. I, I think right. you're thinking of two different things. There, there are slats that do allow light through, and then there are ones that don't. And it's essentially you wouldn't go to the expense of full blocking if, say, you're trying to just obscure a, a view because from 20 feet away, that little bit of you know crevice you're not going to see anything. Versus if you're physically trying to block light or sound, you're going to use a solid slat. Those slats still weave into the fence. Though. That is correct. So there, there's, yeah, there, we go. there will be gaps between, but I, it, it I wouldn't guess be I, suffice I mean, to. I think about the places that have light pollution in town. If there was one of those fences, yeah, that would solve the problem. Okay. Uh, you you know, it's like someone's curtains being closed. Uh, I would prefer to let them. Okay. okay. As long as the as long as. The, the light is being blocked and it's not lighting up the sky. And yeah, it's not going to be very bright light anyway. Right. I'm thinking about, it. never mind. Any of those fences around the purple greenhouses would dramatically change how they appear yeah. if they were tall enough, if the fence was tall enough. And the yes. fence isn't tall enough either. To block, this fence doesn't block the entire. It doesn't block the entire. So there'll be there'll be the cap will be the visible. The entire cap is visible. The light is projected downwards, so so you're gonna not gonna be hanging it from the peak, though, are you? No. Are they gonna be suspended somewhere close to the plant? Close to the plant. Yes. Yeah. 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 The closer they are, the better. Par. Yeah. Any other comments? We've gone through this before, but what are the typical length? They are these plants generally are not lit during the evening, correct? And night, those lights are not 24 hours. What are the standard hours the lights are lit? Difficult to say based on whether it's cloudy day or versus a clear sky. It would be that would be the difference. We're going to run them as the least that we can. They're very expensive to run, relatively. So we certainly will not run them as any but, more than we need. Uh, you talked about like a length of day that you will try to yep. accomplish with the lights and that was was it 12 12 no more 14 yeah. so, so, so you, different depending on the right. we would want to give them 18 hours of light because when you restrict less than 18 during vegetative stage they will go into flower and obviously we want to have them in the veg stage long enough that when we transition the flower we shorten the light output the day length if you will artificially that triggers them to then change into flower so at that point you want to be 18 hours of light it, for flowering no more than 12. what was the 18 you said then? 18 is for the vegetative stage right so yes. during the vegetative stage you are going to want to have 18, 18 hours of light correct but we can use different lights for that they, they can be low intensity lights like led lights shop lights so that they don't are not bright to keep them into the vegetative photo picture. Because this is something we had talked about not past a certain hour in the evening. Right. And now 18 hours is certainly longer than what we were thinking, which was seven or eight o'clock. Well, 18 hours can start early in the morning too. But if it's low intensity lights rather than grow lights, it's not going to be. This is where you would get into more than one crop that makes a difference. Particularly if we have a winter crop. Right. That is a it's a lot of nightlight. Being outside last night working and directing cars out of our dooryard, it is we have very, very little light pollution in that area. Mm. So having those on will be different. Well, having left here a few weeks ago and seeing the purple glow from 
because there was mist in the air. Well, we would all like to control that. <laughs> yep. How would you feel if we said no lights past X o'clock? So that if you were trying to maximize, if you're trying to get to 18 hours, you would just accommodate it by turning them on in the morning earlier. Depends what X is. I don't know. Um, yeah. Just wondering if we could come up with something that rather than having to you know, like discuss endlessly all these different variables, if we just said, what if the lights were off by nine? And I don't, I'm just we're throwing, else, we're, I'm just throwing we're, out there. We could put that in a condition, and then we could drop this in the greenhouse discussion. themselves. Yeah, we we would be more comfortable that we would abide that there would not be light pollution. I think that would be comprehensive um, instead of picking on you know time type of thing. I think we'd rather just make it there's not light pollution. Period. Because we could also black out the greenhouses, and that's something else we also look at as blacking out the greenhouses themselves in addition to okay. the fence around the outside. Right. So if it starts up and there's say no light pollution if, after nine if there's if there's issues with light pollution we fix it we can re revisit this absolutely. I absolutely. think that would just add to I mean even though you've said it in here we had another condition saying <coughs> there's no light pollution even though that's in the bylaw there is, now it's been said very clearly mm -hmm. and yeah yeah so condition would be there will be no nighttime light pollution yeah. I mean, and then we wonder what the definition of that actually means, but. Uh. Again, falls under being good neighbors. So. Right. Yep. Yeah. But we could, we could come up with an hour, but I think it would be easier to say no light pollution. Yeah. 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 We'd be comfortable. The bylaw requires that uh, a calculation of lot coverage ratios to about it we did talk about it last time. I did not see it in here. I didn't see it. Um, but you know, I looked at the. I don't think you have this nice survey map now, and it's really evident about the lot coverage. It's mm -hmm. Visually yeah. evident, even yeah. if you didn't do a number calculation. Your uh, existing greenhouses. To uh, it doesn't matter. For the like interview, you like lot change. coverage okay. has to be accommodated. And, it's included uh, in the bylaw. Yeah, but this this. this Obvious that it falls in within the, the guidelines of the bylaw. The maintenance plan for the odor control. Um, how often do the scrubbers have to be replaced, and is there a mechanism to ensure that that will happen? As needed. Essentially, it you know it, it it's. They're talking manufacturers, it's difficult to quantify how long it's going to last, but it's very obvious when the time to change it is. Um, yeah. yeah, and Judy, if I, I would say if this is, if you feel like this is an important issue, we could add another condition like the light pollution conditions. Reiterating what's in the bylaw, saying no odor. No odor past the property line. Yeah. Okay. And just I, I think that's and not worry about the, my the min minutia of how they're going to maintain the effectiveness of the of the scrubbers. My sense is that's the major concern of the voters. Well, and it is in the bylaws, and that's the intention of yeah. the scrubber. Uh, so, is the answer that we put in another condition? I personally don't feel a need to, I think, it, because it's, it's in the bylaw. It's in the bylaw, it should be um, clear. But so this is our packet, these three things. Okay. Survey. And the survey. Uh, right. Okay. We'll go in with that. Anything else from the board? Any from the public? Any questions? I, I have a question. Yes, um, that last meeting, you guys talked about 500 feet from the school. This is this a planning, planning board meeting? Um, zoning, zoning meeting. Oh, it was a zoning board meeting. Yeah. Sorry about that. Um, how was 
that 500 feet determined? Is that determined by the law, or is that something that one of the boards determines? In the bylaw. It's in the bylaw. That was the, the bylaws the planning board proposed and the town voted on a year and a half ago okay. was 500 feet from schools, and the school property. And it says from uh, 500 feet from the marijuana establishment. What is the establishment? The physical structures. The greenhouse. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, didn't that wasn't very clear to me. Um, and I had another question about um, there must be waste. You don't use the whole plant, right? Correct. Is there odor or anything from that? Like, how is that disposed of? It, it'll be essentially anything but the flowers. So the vast majority of any odor is the flowers. And that was evident um, when we had the site visit. Um, we invited everybody in to smell some existing marijuana plants under the home cultivation um, part of the law. And um, consensus was there was no odor. Um, and the stalks are, are chipped and ground into compost. Will they be composted within the, yes. the 500 yes. foot? Yeah, yes. it has to be. Within yep. the envelope? Yeah, within yes. the envelope. Yes. Yeah. Yep. 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 That's a CCC regulation. So if there, for any reason, are flowers that don't meet the standards you need to sell, which must happen occasionally, mm -hmm. Never on your side, I'm sure. No, 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 no. It's all saleable, even from the trimmings. It's a saleable product. Yeah, we use. We it's just it's just sold in it as a different product form, as key to for the flowers manufacturers. to manufacturers. Yeah. So you anticipate no waste from whatsoever. Correct. That's right. So once once the stems and so forth have been composted, mm -hmm. can they then be used? Off-site? Yes. Yes, they can be land applied and incorporated into the soil. Okay. Yeah, they're nutrient rich still. Okay. Any other questions from the public? All right. I have no more questions. Um, I think. Might um, well advised to uh, approve this with some uh, additional conditions. Being, um, do you need to close the public hearing? Um, yes, we do. Yeah, that'd be good. I never remember when to do that. All right. It is now 7:47. We're going to close the public meeting. Condition of getting a special permit. Condition of receiving um, the um, approval of can cannabis board commission and um, okay. approval of by the uh, board of health. Board of health. Excuse me, not number two. Is cannabis commission, CCC, cannabis control commission. Getting a certificate, to just approval, 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 approval from the state. Okay. Yeah. We're fine with that. Yeah. Uh, and I have three more conditions to add for discussion. Anyway, uh, condition that the security equipment will be housed in the harvest building. Condition that there will be at least one odor scrubber in each greenhouse, and the condition that there will minimum of at least or minimum of yeah uh, either way would be fine with me. Uh, that I'm not quite trying to phrase it, but there will not be light pollution from the greenhouses. Maybe just that. That's just that sounds good. Those are my proposals to add. Should we? 
we've talked before about whether we should try and draft the exact wording in these meetings or or draft it separately and approve it at the next meeting. Um, since we're only meeting in two weeks, maybe we could complete the latter. If we agree on the sense of it, we could come up with the exact wording. Were these simple enough? They seem pretty simple. Okay. They seem pretty simple. I mean, sometimes I agree. We often have complicated yeah. conditions, and these all seem like bullet points. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think the applicant would be happy if we forged ahead. You had some others. We had the board of house. First one I had was once Grover Greenhouse, then there was a question about possibly making it a condition that the Board of Health would approve the new packet. That's what you just mentioned. Right. To, to have them approve that. Uh, light pollution, I have that one down. No odors. That was rejected to be a condition because it's already in the uh, bylaws. Yes. I didn't have it. I don't have anything else. There was a couple at the very beginning of the, of the talk. And do we have formal police and fire approval of this plan as opposed to with the changes? The changes, according to, um, we don't, but. Well, so we should can just condition on formal. Formal acknowledgement of police and fire. Safety, town safety officials. Okay. Formal approval by town safety officials. Okay. That's, that's condition number seven. Of updated plan. Because, because just to not be confused with the approval that they've already given. Uh, just Formal so they, approval of updated plan Just so they, by see, town they see the latest officials. plan and say, yes, everything's still good. So you have ju seven, Judy? It sounds like Mary had a couple of these doubled up. I, have six. Yeah. I just have my well, three that I Oh, I don't have the cannabis control commission. Yeah, that's fine. Well, Judy's got it to give to me so I can write this up correctly. Well, somebody should read the map loud. Me too. Whichever version we're going to use. I don't think mine are. You want me to read what I have? Or yes. Just, just to make sure they match. Um, get the special permit from the ZBA. Number two, get CCC approval. Number three, get Board of Health approval. And that's of the new package. Right. Number four, uh, that uh, statement of some sort that the security equipment will be housed in the Harvest Building. Right. That's that the, the security. Or no, we're not looking for a statement. You're just no, saying just that's saying that, that that's, 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 that's fact. That's, that's, that's how they said it's going. That's a condition of the we're making a condition that yeah. that's we agree that's where it should be. Yeah. Um, number five, at least one scrubber in each greenhouse. Six, no light pollution. Seven, formal approval approval of the updated plan by town safety officials. Mm -hmm. Check. Thank you very much. Um, my only you know, change would be that it says not just scrubber, but odor scrubber. Yeah, I, think mm -hmm. I think mine says that. Yep. Okay. Well, I'd make a motion we approve the site plan with these seven conditions. Second. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. And you're Stay. refusing. Yep. So the motion passes. We will get something to you in the mail within a week. Great. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you. Just one comment, the CCC will need something before they can sign off on it, so I, I think this, this will work. Yeah. You're saying sooner is better. 
yes. what you're saying? Brian, Brian has a packet that he needs to respond either to got, we've satisfied our local permitting and approvals or have still in the process. So I'll communicate with him. And Brian, uh, Brian, the Brian, the administrator. Yes, yes. And when is the, your, the hearing on the special permit? Thursday. 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 Yes. Okay. So I've got at least till then to get it to <laughs> <That's all. laughs> That's cool. Thank you. Thank you so much. Here to uh, submit a site plan application for retail marijuana establishment at 424 State Road, which is the Sugarloaf Shops Building A, uh, which I came for an informal discussion a week ago. Um, so I don't know what the procedure is for submission, but I have an original. Give it to me, and I here. sign off on important things to check. We have the check, check, and the form. And these guys have been folding school. Oh, yeah. Well, we submitted Northampton a lot, so we, we are absolutely in folding school. Um, so, this is our application form. And check. take any of this tonight or does this all go to the town clerk um, give all, all, those should all go to the town clerk okay but what I will do is once I get this um, signed we'll make copies so that everybody's got the same copy that this will be the, uh, the legal Great. one of those packets is for the planning board What's that? One of those packets is yep. for the planning board why yep. don't we keep one packet yep. and okay. pass it around amongst mm -hmm. us well, actually, in what we should do is request digital copies. Absolutely. And if you send them to Dell, you can forward them to us. That's good. I'd be happy to have this, and then I'll return it to the room. So it's more in our box. I'm hoping you can do the like a five minute now? I'd like that. Sure. Just because I missed last week. Absolutely. Let me uh, open up one of these plans that I have here. Let's see if we can make this work as well as the West Coast. It's a pretty primitive setup. Mm -hmm. You know, we should start asking for digital. All right. No one of those two. Uh, if we only had the password. <laughs> <laughs> so, as I mentioned, this is at the Sugarloaf Shop site. So, of course, the town line with Deerfield is right here. This is Building A, which is at the northern portion of the lot. And the next sheet has a larger version of the same site. Um, so, the my client, which is Toro Verde Number Three which is a subsidiary of Harvest Inc., which is the parent company, um, which has a number of establishments in different states throughout the country. They have a different legal organization for each thing that they're building in Massachusetts. So, there's a so this is number three in the state? So they are, working they are working on three retail locations, one in Northampton, one in Waitley, one in Greenfield, as well as a grow facility in Deerfield that will supply product to those locations. Each one has its own legal entity. Why, I do not know, uh, but I, I'm sure they have their reasons. Um, so they have uh, entered a lease with the owner, uh, as was discussed last week. One of these plans, I actually erased this property line, but it still shows on this plan. But this is all uh, a condominium. Uh, 
building A, which is the one that our client is leasing, as well as building C, which is just a small storage barn, are owned by Old State Road LLC. Um, and then uh, building B is owned by Yankee Candle. Uh, so this building is 8,000 square feet, of which only 5,000 square feet is allowed to be the uh, retail facility um, by the zoning code. So uh, there will be renovation inside to create a 5,000 square foot store, possibly less. Uh, the remaining uh, square footage would be left idle initially. Uh, it may be sublet for general retail, but would not be part of the operation. Uh, essentially zero external um, improvements. Uh, everything uh, is, is internal. So existing site access from the driveway, uh, parking lots, um, uh, no utility changes, no stormwater changes because there's no difference in the previous area. Uh, we will um, take the, the liberty of the two signs that were allowed under the code, uh, one wall sign, and really uh, presumably replace the um, existing freestanding sign at the driveway, um, both of those being 12 square feet or less. Those will be under the special permit. That's the um, Board of Appeals for that. Right. Right. So we have nothing to do with the signs. So okay, nothing at all. Right. All right. Well, it, it's, it's mentioned in, in the yeah. write-up um, so that you're at least aware of it. Um, and so in the packet that I've submitted, tried to go through a, a lot of the regulations in the zoning code. Again, uh, several of them, uh, there's not a whole lot to say because the existing use in this facility was retail. It still will be retail, obviously of a different product that has its own sensitivities. Um, I have a neighborhood map here which shows the um, land uses as required that are within a thousand feet of the property and then i also have the 500 foot buffer around the facility itself to identify what those uses are and to show that there are no prohibited uses there is one gray area on that there so there are no schools there i can't remember church schools now. church playgrounds right so no parks no schools um, there is outside of the 500 foot um, buffer but within the thousand foot is this property down here which seems to have an occasional religious use it's um, this is down on Old State Road um, there's there's the furniture maker down here and this property at least on Google Maps comes up as the merge at the barn which leads to a link to Mountain of Worship uh, which claims to have some kind of meeting there occasionally um, I don't know if that would qualify as a church under the code, but regardless, it's outside of a 500 foot radius. And you saw the zoning, there's a provision for if it was even less than 500, if it was up to correct, you could be as close as 300 and ask for a, a special a waiver. A right. Yeah. So we're not violating that, but I did want to draw attention to it because I uh, didn't want to make, make it seem like we were overlooking that. Um, the daycare at the corner of State Road and that is elevated. That is very oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. correct. The other side of the railroad tracks. Yes. It's, okay. it's here. Oh, it's on this property unit right yeah. there. Yeah. Okay. At least there has been. Or a preschool. I think school. it's back again. This is the third incarnation. Okay. Yeah. 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 But anyhow. Um, but so yeah, apologies for overlooking that, but that property is is well outside of our 500 foot radius. Um, and then I do have. Um, I had uh, long conversations with the uh, head of security for Harvest to understand uh, what the plan is, really a safety and security plan, uh, which I'll go through more thoroughly at the public hearing, uh, but that's in the letter that I wrote, as well as a discussion of the odor control um, equipment that's gonna be built in, and uh, some of the, I, I did a lot of homework on that and found the science of it kind of interesting, so I included a little bit of that. Uh, which I thought would be helpful. <laughs> um, as I was listening to the discussion about odor uh, from the previous item, I did realize I intended to include cut sheets from some of that equipment that I received this morning and forgot, so I will follow up and, and provide that of the, the, some of the equipment that they're actually gonna be using um, interior. But of course the standard would be uh, there should be no odor detectable outside the walls of the building. Right. Uh, that's, that's pretty this is clear. entirely retail, no processing. Correct, no processing, no manufacturing, no cultivation. This is just retail. Well, I can tell you that in Northampton, when you open the door, the odor comes out. <laughs> I, I believe, yeah, my, so my, my wife has been a medical patient there for about a year now, um, and she 
uses the app because she doesn't want to spend any more time in there than she has to. So we're, we're well aware of that. Uh, but the, you know, the owner has a track record. They have a number of facilities and, and they're committed to really having best uh, in the industry control, um, which I look forward to talking about more. Great. Um, so any other questions for now? That's no, good. That was just a little Great. orientation is helpful. Sure. Okay, so we will have to advertise for a public hearing for this. And um committee's all have 45 days. Yep. Is that an extra binder book? Um it was the one that goes with the planning board's copy. That'd so be nice. Nice. Excuse me, time. but how many sets are, are going back to the top? Board? Six. She'll get Plus six and we have one. You have one. We brought seven. Yes. Okay, so public hearing. Um, do it for January sometime. I don't want to try doing it at the end of December. Or in the, on the 18th. Yeah. Which is not on time to advertise. Right. Yeah, advertise. Very good. January. Okay, so with the regular meeting, uh, the last Tuesday and Just the 29th. January? Um, I think we prefer earlier if that's possible. Um, Excuse me? 15. I don't mind meeting a, a different week in January. That's just fine. I mean, I prefer not to meet twice if we can help it. But, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm out of school, so it doesn't bother and me. I would You're back I'll, in the 22nd, right? Yeah. I'm going to propose again that we move our meeting time to 6.30. Right. Uh, instead of 7. But that's going to be a, total, a permanent change yeah. for everything. Oh, right? yeah. I thought we were doing it for December. I was a little Sad that we didn't do it today. Uh, so the fifteenth looks it's good okay for me. Yeah, I I see that. Let me just check my calendar here. But I'm sure it's fine. Right. I see no problem with January fifteenth. Okay. So. Well, sure. might make a uh, at 645. Seven? 645, right. 630 meeting, 645 public hearing. Yeah. That gives us time to review the minutes for a change. Okay. So yes? seven? Yep. Yeah. So 645. Um copies. Number of copies? Six. Six copies. Seven. That's one of the copies. That's one that's one of the seven. You hold it. Yeah, but make, make seven copies anyway. I won't check. It's confusing to do this. Six. Well, I'm going to give you one of those for legal purposes. Right. Okay. Just look like you're falling asleep. Your lights look nice. Yeah, shut off the lights. <laughs> we checked them out yesterday. Okay. Did you folks have any questions while he's here? It's, it's hard to come at even on the other one if you don't see anything. I mean, you're asking for comments based on what? No, it's so. We were singularly unsuccessful in getting them to break large. We're, we're doing digital, so you, it's on a website, so anybody like can look and see what's going on. Well, I think we should talk about asking people for to bring digital things that they could project. Yeah. You, you're asking for voters to come in, and if you don't live immediately near it, I mean, I live across the street. I, I don't know a final proposal until it came here today. Well, all you, the you weren't the only in, one, actually. And I know, and all the details in, in, in the write-up, I, I guess it, it's a butters maybe are kind of a disadvantage because you don't see any of that, and and you guys are acting uh, as as a board for the town. I understand that, but when you want input from butters, 
we've got to give them something to look at to respond other than no, we don't want noise, no, we don't want odor. Uh, well, that's all you want to find. You have suggestions. We we would love to be able to get more butters. We'd yeah. be love to be able to get bigger drawings too, which yeah, we have in some cases have been successful. It's on the website. As there is a note, not the announcement, but the information that they submit. Put all that on on the website so anybody anybody can look at that. So, okay, so this, well, this is your we didn't get to okay. tonight either. I, I yeah. know you can but in the future stuff maybe. Yeah. All right. Um what I miss? Nothing. You have the planning board copies of this one. I do. Uh, the discussion about trying to encourage people to bring digital things. So if you have a laptop, this projector. I actually prefer to do it that way as long as there's a good setup for it. So, I, so I'd be happy to. We have. Yeah, yeah, if we could arrange it. Okay. Yeah, I would be very happy to do that. Putting it on the website. So that's my check. I don't want to make it look like I'm. Okay, so. Oh, that seems so great. That goes to yeah. the. Why would it be only us to look at? Of course, we go to the comments, right? We want comments yeah. from the public. It's kind of hard. Uh, but I want to make. So, <coughs> where did where did you get the copies? He gave them to me, but you All need one. I only need. You only need the top one. Top the one that I gave you because that's been signed. And these right. other copies <coughs> should need to go. Correct. These, um, these. But one should go with the planning board set. Also, I think. To have a set for the planning board? Yep. And then we need a set here for the town clerk. And we'll put the check with that one. So I think you need one more copy. Well, I need, so we're, how many copies have you made? I made six just as I was told. Yeah, I have, I have a stack of them here. Okay. That will be. Yeah, I need with, one for this one here, which is going to be the town clerk. Well, you need seven to check. go with each of the plans. Okay. Yeah, one that's, for Don, one for him. Four, we need one. That's yeah. not signed. So oh. seven sets of plans. Aha. You can make two more copies? No. Nope. We're, we're good. Actually, this is the original. That's yours. Right. I've never seen it be this confusing. Okay, so now so, I want one which is not yours okay. to put on the town clerk. We can do that. And you've got one, right? That's fine. There we go. All right. But I can make more copies if we need them. Okay, so you, you're going to give this to the town clerk tomorrow, right? Yes. All right, I'm sure of. <sighs> okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Chris. Send the agenda. I lost my agenda. Uh, designate a planning board, I'm assuming, web member to serve on the Capital Improvement Planning Committee. Right. I am not volunteering. And not what? No, thank you. Oh, good. Is anybody kind of Do you guys want to um, describe the res what that means? What level of responsibility? Yeah, is just how bad will that be? And what knowledge do you how need? How often does it mean? Yeah. Um, so the Capital Improvement Planning Committee is responsible for reviewing, prioritizing, and recommending to the Select Board and the Finance Committee capital projects for the town. Historically, and I'll, I'll give you my, my historical experience, which is two years, um, the committee's met once each year. Um, and I'm hoping to expand that because it, 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 our capital plan could, could use some improvement. expansion and improvement. Yeah, it could use some improvement. Um, and we really want to start <coughs> taking an in-depth look at some of our facilities that we have and really plan out for the next 10 years as to what projects we have. So looking for people who would want to meet really you know it, it would be year-round um, with a little bit with a couple more meetings during budget season when we finalize the report um, if I had to guess at the number of meetings I would say maybe four to five a year I don't think it's, it's going to be that many but we'd like to engage the committee uh, a little bit more and have them 
actually look at some of our facilities and, and see what the department heads are requesting. Because in the past it's just been sort of, well, it's, the facility needs a new roof and no one really has an idea as to why or what condition it's in in terms of the, the knowledge of the committee. So we're trying to expand that a little bit. We've had a representative who has resigned, is that? It's really not clear to me, um, at least since I've been here. Um, there's no active member of the planning board that's participating on the committee. I've, I've never heard anybody on the planning board talk about being well, part of the capital. It was clear it was our representative, and I remember we, we asked. It was like 96. We asked once that he report back to us. The bylaws written that the, the, the way that I read the bylaws says that there should be a member of the planning board on the capital planning committee. And there, there's a, there's there's several at large spots. There's so the way that I interpret the situation now is that we would have we have one at large vacancy, and that's assuming Bruce would continue on as an at large, and we would have one planning board member vacancy. I guess I'll do it. I'll, I'll give you my firstborn child. Yeah. <laughs> I'll give you his firstborn child, too. <laughs> you would be a good representative. I, I will nominate choice. Nicholas to serve. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Oh, thank you very much, Nicholas. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Actually, I think you'd be very good. As long as I'm not still on the planning board. Okay, review order guidelines for the marijuana facilities. Well, based on today's discussion, I'm not sure it's necessary. Um, I'd written some up based on that plan from Aspen that, that I found. But then I looked at the information we prepared for marijuana establishments. And number 10 says an odor control plan detailing the specific odor emitting activities or processes to be conducted on site, the source of those odors, the locations from which they are emitted from the facility, the frequency of such odor emitting activities, the duration of such, and the administrative and engineering controls that would be implemented to control such odors, including maintenance of such controls. This is the guideline thing that you wrote that we all approved as useful for people you know, that's posted on the website we sent to the CBA. I think it's all there. I kind of think so. So I would withdraw the suggestion and rely on what we've already approved. Okay, I thought you wanted to modify that somehow. No, I thought we needed separate things and I had forgotten that it was this was so okay. clear. Yep. I think it's all here. One thing that's not here is that we might want to require an engineer to look over things in some circumstances, but we could do that anyway. So, we don't think. so I, I will. I think we will refine it. Is okay. I'm very interesting. Toro Verde gentleman seems like he's very enthusiastic about what he's found about this. So I'm very. Interested he's enthusiastic about what he's found about odor controls. Wasn't that what he was? No, he was saying that he had he had his odor control stuff. He just had forgotten to bring it. Yeah, but, no, he, but he was very excited. I learned about the sound and what he learned. Oh, oh, very interested. Oh, right. That, that, what that, he's that gonna there present. is science about it. Yeah. Right, and yeah. I was very interested in what he's going to present yeah. and some of his sources. Right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Good point. Okay. And Finding someone so excited about that was interesting. Is there anything for other? I'll move we adjourn. Um, Are we going to do we minutes so we don't get in trouble? Okay. Okay, so we've got two oh. to, two to uh, approve, right? Yes, we so have the 30th and the 27th. I had the third It's a mess though.
Yes. Yes. Remember, page four is on the back of page one. Okay. Oh, goodness. All right, we're doing something. She's going to... She's going to make them a little clearer for herself. She's trying to save paper. I don't know my printer very well. The comparison between the two is playing back. The, uh, the odor causing terpenes are volatile organic compounds, meaning they readily evaporate in the atmosphere, which causes cannabis odor to be particularly intense. Cannabis terpenes are also highly susceptible to oxidation. Once oxidized, they are permanently neutralized, as the oxidized terpenes cannot interact with nerve sensors in the human nose. The proposed system will inject an oxidizing chemical into the HVAC system for distribution throughout the facility. The oxidizing chemicals all carry OSHA maximum exposure levels, and the system is designed to ensure airborne levels remain at a fraction of those maximums. The air purification system also imparts an ionic charge to terpenes passing through the system, which causes them to coagulate and drop out of the air. Controlled studies have shown this process to be highly effective at eliminating terpenes terpene concentrations in the air. The odor control plan will also include a monitoring component during building commissioning as a means of quality control. Night and day. Too bad that we, yeah, this wasn't our initial contact. Yes, there is the, what to achieve. And he even folded them. This is my book. What happened to Mary? She's making copies. She's beating up the copier right now. There's one, four, two, and three. My pages. <laughs> okay, so right now, the, when we had the hearing on the 30th, we just Move to resume the public hearing on December 18th. We didn't specify a time, so we're going to make it at 6:45 as well. Sorry, I had to warm up. I just thought you were beating it up. Um, thank you. We have time to advertise that. Do we have time for that? I mean, they were advertised before at seven, so I'm not sure we can change it. Well, we continue to so. We didn't mention a change in time. People will assume the same one. But then, if they look at the agenda, oh, is there an advertising? We we don't need to advertise it no, because it's we continued. Just continued. It's, it's continued. Right. right. No, we didn't mention um, it. Are there other things on the agenda for that meeting? You want Keith? Yes. Because yeah. we could just swap 
Yeah, could swap. We could start at six thirty and do Keith first. Keith, yeah, or whatever else is on it. I'm minutes. Sure he would appreciate that greatly. And yeah, and then can have them at seven as, okay. as expected. Sounds good. good All right, so we're going to look at minutes um, from October thirtieth. <laughs> So then you had a question about the setback, Mary, on page two? Yeah, um, maybe that doesn't even have to be in there. I, I, I was proposing that we just strike it. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and we could strike that entire thing. The setback is currently, we don't, okay. need, we don't need any of it. I'm getting rid of the whole thing. Yep. Um, on page two in the second paragraph, uh, I can pass you my notes, Mary, but I was, on the second or third sentence, it says she explained that the Natural Heritage and Endangered Species Program has said that, and then I crossed out whatever, and changed it to has said that the project is too close to the River Channel, and and then picked up again will require a special state permit due to the impact. I found that it was just confusing the way it was run. <laughs> and I can hand you this if you like. Uh, and in the last sentence, the very no, end of that. that well, okay, give me the sentence. I'll, I'll hand yeah. The last sentence of that same paragraph. Can then schedule a continuance of the hearing to a date following the ZBA, and I just changed it to meeting, where you wrote addresses the variance. Yeah. And Judy had a, a suggestion down in the third paragraph. One the of the third forwards. paragraph and the Same landscaping. Page. Same page. So. Landscaping both. Oh yeah, so I love the panels. That paragraph. Or the second bullet point where it says landscaping. The end of that, and Meredith Savage will send a digital copy to Judy to distribute to the board. I think that probably came at that point in the meeting, but it it wasn't, it was intended to be a digital copy of the whole plan. Oh, okay, not the maintenance so plan. It's, just so the, it's, okay. so I would put it not in that set of bullet points, but up as an item on its own somewhere. Okay, separate that. It's, it's whole package. Yeah. Whole application. Page three, uh, taking the D off of and at the end of the first sentence. But that's the, the first sentence on page three. Yeah, and agricultural exemption here. I'm passing those. Oh, it's uh, oh, sorry. And oh, I think. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so then page. Anything? I'll make a motion to approve the minutes with those changes. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Motion passes. November 27th. Oh, there's, Nicholas, there's a thing here. That was Judy, oh, that, oh, that's and that was the just. Um, I, oh, that's the same thing we just addressed. Yeah. yeah. I, okay. I, had it making okay. a separate paragraph. One, two, three, and four. Okay, this can go back to that one. We. Back. You have page four. Cause I, I, yes, nice yes, you, I. You gave me one that goes now in order. <laughs> okay, so I'll prove as a minute.
the November 27th looks fine. I move that we accept it. Um, forward I seconded under other we discussed maybe not putting the next meeting date on the agenda do we want to make that uh, ch change that to put the next scheduled next normally scheduled if needed do we want to completely delete it what's the what's the utility of having it at all what does it add um, I have no idea but you just inherited it yeah I've never seen anybody else do it. I don't the, see any advantage to the, it. The select board does, but their meetings tend to be quite regular. 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 Yeah. And I think maybe they say scheduled. I don't think what you know the reason that we're talking, that you're we're, you're responding to it is going to likely happen again. Right. Like, that was just an experience that we happened to have, where someone thought that was the public hearing date because it said next because it's on the agenda because it's on the agenda that they thought it was publicized, but. Well, they, uh, they claim it was the next posted. Yes. Uh, but that's not posted. But it's not. Yeah. That was just a, you know, that was just a, a strange think, situation. Well, maybe if we make a change. Well, I think on the on the web page it says it's, it's the third Thursday of every month. Uh, last Tuesday. I mean, third Thursday, third Tuesday. Last Tuesday. Well, Last, yeah, right. We've it's the last Tuesday. Right. The last Tuesday. It may say it's the third. I don't think so. I think I think those are labeled as, as sort of typical so, or something like that. It's not. Well, I don't see any reason to put it on, so I'm not going to put it on. So we're going to take it off. I think that's good. We're going to change meetings to 6:30 and hearings to start at 6:45. And we're going to find another member. Um. So I talked to Helena, and she's gotten more responsibility at her new job and was willing to resign if... Did she ever get sworn in? I don't know. <laughs> but um, I really would like to have her experience on the yes. board, but I also would really like to have somebody that can... Could you make her like a um, an environmental consultant or something? An ad hoc member, someone yeah. who could just come and, and sit in and, and advise us. Well, I think Patty Devine is kind of that way with the conservation board. I don't know. I'll ask Scott what they, what, what they call her, but she's not an official member. But she shows up at meetings when she can. She was there the other day. Yeah. yeah. So I'll talk to Brian about that and see what we can do. And then, um, yeah, because her expertise would be great to have. Yeah. But it would be even more valuable to have another active, active member. Yeah, because yeah. we're, we're 
we're going to get more and more things where we have to reduce our disposable sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, not having, a summertime, not having disposable sort of thing. All right. Um. Well, we're going to do Sarah and I, we're both like, well, Juniper Solar, and oh. I have some photos. I would love to hear a two minute reaction to what, what you saw. It's big. It's big. It's big. It's a lot of that land it's down there. The whole no. way to block that. It's the whole bottom land. It's bigger than it looks on the board. It looks a, bigger because the lot doesn't show what's the. That it's such a large view. Right? Is, I mean, yes, we've got news to telephone poles, but that is, uh, it is. So the drawing doesn't show what's woodlot, so you have a tendency to think that the river oh. comes in front of the woodlot and it doesn't because we're fine. So it looks like open space on the plan. It doesn't look it, like it visually because it's trees. So it looks like it's filling the so whole like open filling. land. It is. it is, in fact. It is, in fact. And it also is much more visible from the street than I expected it to be. And How'd they mark it out? <laughs> Pink and blue. They couldn't find any red. Pink and blue, like around the perimeter? On various, I think the pink was what was going to be in AR1. Blue was the original. Yeah. yeah. And vice versa. And then some of them took off. <laughs> were not as staked as well as they could have been there. And she was the only one with an orange vest. I'm like, wow, I feel stupid on a Saturday during hunting season. So she's impressive that she remember that too. Um, there was nobody from the Conservation Commission there. Um, many of others. Many of others. Only, only Roger from the CBA, which is unfortunate. The, Hundred feet out of a four hundred feet foot setback is big too. I mean, it looked bigger on the ground than I thought the intrusion in the one would be. Mm. And against a quarter of the of the zone. And it, it but I mean that actually puts it less out of view. But the more thing, out of view? Yeah, because it's closer to the road and less out, but it's huge. Mm. It's it is the entire as you look out across from that going by Brad's house, it is the entire forefront of your sight line. And the problem is, is that the road comes down on this. There is no and way up to, to it. Right. So I mean, like, I've already blocked out the thing on Christian Lane. I don't notice it at all anymore unless I turn and look at it right. and see what they've done. It's flat. Yeah. This is you're looking down mm -hmm. to the valley. And the other thing is, one of the questions was. Um, are these going on the topography that's there, even a level? And the topography there goes up from this, you know, goes down from the street and flatten and up slightly at the back. So, you know, so it rises from the street. You look down on it and then it goes up. And, and then you can't block it from, this, from, from across the street, you can't block it either because you're, yeah. Yeah, you're looking down. It doesn't go up very much because. No, it doesn't go up very much. That swale through there was an old meander path, <coughs> so it's it's maybe a meter up, but I don't any more than that. Um, questions were good. Um, well, we'll see. Yeah. Well, Thursday will be very interesting. Is they coming to the CBA on Thursday also? Well, it's a busy night. They're doing both. <laughs> All right. So the only mail we've got is from Tom Hadley, and they're going to do a new library senior center thing. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. Hey, we're catching up with the newspapers. All right. I'll move the adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye.